Hi, I'm Ellen from the Chili Dog and today I'm going to show you how to do a tubular bind off in the round. This is a slick method for finishing one by one or knit one purl one ribbing because it's going to create a very flexible edge that looks like your stitches are uninterrupted as they flow over the divide between the right side and the wrong side of your knitting. The tubular bind off is a sewn bind off that is essentially the same as the Kitchener stitch. First, let me explain why it works and then I'll demonstrate the process. I'm finishing the cuff of my Grand Staircase socks and it has been worked in knit one purl one ribbing. So imagine that we're separating these ribbed stitches at the top of the cuff onto two knitting needles by alternating one stitch on the front needle, one stitch on the back, one stitch on the front needle, one stitch on the back. Ultimately what would be happening is all of the knit stitches would be placed on the front needle and all of the purl stitches would be placed on the back needle. Separating these stitches would ultimately create a little channel at the top of the ribbing. Closing the channel by bending over the stitches so that the top edges, shown in pink, meet, creates a tube. If I lay that top edge of the tube flat so we can see it better, it's like looking at the right side of two pieces that are knit in stockinette stitch. To invisibly graft those stitches together, we Kitchener stitch, weaving our yarn up and then under two stitch legs and then back down and under two stitch legs, up and under two stitch legs, down and under two stitch legs and so on. So now let's bind off the actual stitches of the sock cuff. As I said earlier, the tubular bind off is essentially the same as the Kitchener stitch. But because we are working in the round, it's not practical to separate alternating stitches onto two different knitting needles. So we're going to bind off without shifting the stitches onto different needles. You'll need to trim your yarn tail so that it's at least four times longer than the length that you're binding off. And then you can put a yarn needle onto the tail. To make things easier at the end of the bind off, I'm gonna place a locking stitch marker through the first two stitches of the round. And then lock it shut. From this point, the bind off process is done in two steps. When your first stitch on your knitting needle is a, at the top of a knit column, you're going to bring your yarn needle through the first stitch knitwise and drop it off the knitting needle, skip a stitch, and then bring your yarn needle purlwise through the next stitch and pull the yarn through. And then snug things up. When the first stitch on your knitting needle is at the top of a purl column, things are worked just slightly differently. If the first stitch is at the top of a purl column, you're going to bring your yarn needle through that first stitch purlwise and drop it off. Skip the next stitch and then bring your yarn needle forward from the back to the front between the two stitches and then go knitwise through that next stitch and pull your yarn through. Again, just be careful that it doesn't get tangled up on anything. 
So we'll repeat that a couple more times just so you can familiarize yourself with the process. The next stitch is at the top of a knit column. So I'm gonna bring my yarn needle knitwise through the stitch and drop it off, skip a stitch, and then purlwise through the next stitch and pull my yarn through. Snug things up. The next stitch is at the top of a purl column. So I'm going to bring my yarn needle purlwise through the next stitch, drop it off, skip a stitch, bring the yarn needle between the two stitches on my needle, and then knit wise through that second stitch. And that can take just a little manipulating. And then pull the yarn through. And we'll do it one last time. At the top of a knit column, you'll bring the needle knitwise through and drop it off, skip a stitch, and then purlwise and pull the yarn through. Snug it up. When you're at the top of a purl column, you bring it purlwise through the stitch and drop it off, skip a stitch, bring the needle forward from the back to the front between two stitches, and then go knitwise through the next stitch. And pull the yarn through and snug it up. And you're going to continue on until you have two stitches remaining on the knitting needle. I have two stitches left on my knitting needle and then I'm back to my stitch marker. My next stitch is at the top of a knit column so I'm going to bring my needle knitwise through that first stitch and drop it off, skip the next stitch, and then purlwise through the first stitch that's on my marker and pull the yarn through. Snug things up. My last stitch is at the top of a purl column. So I'm gonna bring my needle purlwise through that last stitch and take the knitting needle completely out of my work. I'm gonna skip the first stitch on my marker I'm going to bring the knitting ne or bring my yarn needle rather forward between the two stitches and then knit wise through that second stitch. And again, this can take a little manipulating. So knit wise through that second stitch, pull my yarn through, snug things up, and then I can also remove the stitch marker because all of my stitches are bound off. So at this point, once all your stitches are bound off, you can simply weave in your yarn tail on the wrong side of your work like normal. And as you can see at the edge of our sock, our stitches will continue around that top edge of the cuff and just flow from one side to the other without any sort of interruption and we have a nice stretchy edge. I hope you enjoyed learning how to do a tubular bind off in the round with one by one ribbing. This method takes a little more time than a plain bind off, but in my opinion, the neat flexible finish is often worth the effort. I hope you'll take a moment to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and subscribe to my channel, The Chili Dog, on YouTube. Until we stitch again, happy knitting!